Now that we've completed our exploration of the basic principles of flight, let's pull that together into understanding the flight envelope. That is to say, the maximum limits within which we can safely operate the aircraft. The way that we tend to do this is by examining a graph of airspeed versus load factor. Sometimes you may hear this referred to as a VN diagram because airspeed is often denoted as V and load factor often denoted as N. You'll recall from our earlier discussion about lift that the maximum amount of lift that we can produce is a function of V squared, our airspeed squared. Therefore, as we increase our speed, so will increase our ability to generate lift. As load factor is the ratio of the lift versus weight, so as our airspeed increases, the maximum possible load factor that we can achieve will follow a curve something like this. As this flight envelope diagram is outlining the limits of what is possible with the aircraft, trying to exceed this load factor at low air speeds anywhere along this curve will mean that we are exceeding the maximum amount of lift that the wing can generate. If we're trying to achieve greater lift than is available to us on the wing, it means that we're trying to increase the angle of attack beyond the critical angle of attack and therefore will be stalled. And so on this first part of the graph, exceeding the blue line will result in the aircraft stalling. Just as we can stall the wing when it's at a positive angle of attack, so we can also stall it at a negative angle of attack. And even in modern jet transport aircraft, the VN diagram will extend below the zero G line. The point at which the aircraft stalls at 1G is often described as our VS1 or our clean stall speed. You will recall that of course the stall is nothing to do with speed and we can stall at any speed. However, this is often used as a reference figure. When we have the flaps deployed or other high lift devices, we'll be able to generate a greater amount of lift at lower air speed. However, it's often the case that with high lift devices or undercarriage deployed, we have a lower maximum G limit of the aircraft. In the case of the diagram here, we have a maximum permissible load factor of plus 2G and down to 0G whilst the flaps are deployed. With the aircraft in the clean configuration, back to the blue lines, the maximum permitted load factor of the aircraft will dictate the top and the bottom of this graph. In this case, according to normal certification standards, we have a, a maximum positive load factor of 2.5 and a maximum negative load factor of minus one. The speed at which our maximum control deflection will result in an overstress of the aircraft exceeding the maximum permissible load factor we refer to as VA or the maneuvering speed. The design cruising speed of the aircraft will be somewhere up here in the flight envelope and the maximum permissible speed of the aircraft will be denoted by VNE and will dictate the right hand edge of our graph here. So now that we've outlined the limits of the aircraft, flying the aircraft anywhere within this flight envelope will result in safe, predictable aircraft handling. At the lower speed end of this diagram, exceeding the maximum lift available to us will result in a stall. Once we are beyond VA, if we exceed the certificated maximum load factor of the aircraft, or if we exceed the maximum certificated speed for the airframe, then we will risk structural failure. Therefore, you can see the importance that during upset recovery, we work to keep the aircraft within this flight envelope. However, the flight envelope will be much larger than the envelope within which we normally operate. And so an important part of practical training in a simulator or a suitable training airplane must be an exploration of the extent of the flight envelope so that you can understand how to recognize and how to keep within the limits of your aircraft.